what you said. Investigators walking us through what they say was a major distribution center of illegal cannabis products now being dismantled. There is several million dollars worth of product in there. Inside a warehouse at the corner of Adelphi Street and Park Avenue in Fort Greene, piles of product. Flour, pre-rolls, edibles, oils, concentrates. It's just a whole distribution network. Three weeks later. Just bags and bags of flour. At least 50 pounds of marijuana flour stashed behind a blacked out storefront in Sheepshead Bay, Brooklyn. We were there as the New York City Sheriff sifted through over a million dollars worth of marijuana in all different forms as they busted the unlicensed cannabis shop Tuesday. So they're already packaged for distributing. But what's most significant here, the Sheriff says, is the printing press making colorful and misleading cartoon packages. Some of these labels are indicating one, that it's from California, which it's not, and two, it's also the kids' packaging. Which, which is what endangers our communities right now. Sheriff Anthony Miranda says this printer is a clear indication that this location distributes unregistered and untaxed pot to unlicensed shops around the city. Uh, roughly about a month ago, uh, we discussed about an illegal distribution center of cannabis, edibles, and all that that was busted by sheer luck by the NYPD because they were investigating a burglary and they came across this warehouse. Uh, it seems like over in, Sh meanwhile, over in Sheepshead Bay, another distribution center has been. Uh, Broken up, been busted. The hell you say? But the difference is with this particular operation, they um, was making the packaging and everything that was going along with this, and chemicals were found. Chemicals that were being used in the cannabis itself, which I've said there's been a danger out there. Those of you who are cannabis users i give you this fair warning and you'll tell me you know and i know some of them tell you well no it's natural it's from the ground no there are parties out there legitimate and illegitimate that are lacing marijuana they're lacing the cannabis now some of them are lacing it to increase the strength and people say well we want more strength and so, no that's a that's a danger in itself because a lot of these people are not really scientists and they don't re really know what to do. It's just like if, you're, co if you're, you're cooking up a meal, you know, you're adding a little bit of this and a little bit of that. You know, sometimes you can over season something. Think about that for a minute. And the illegitimate part of it is, and you've seen this on the streets of Philadelphia, New York, uh, Seattle, you know, they're putting in other chemicals in there tranquilizers uh things that can endanger your life so let's read this off this is off for, from new york's local eyewitness news large marijuana operation in sheepshead bay busted by new york sheriffs two people arrested now before we move on to this we have to put to this point because we've discussed this before in another episode there is a lawsuit pending on this particular sheriff's that they've gone around with uh, just locking these things up without going to a judge, without going to through proper constitutional legal matters, violation of the Constitution. We, you know, you can catch that video. Uh, and that, that case has not been heard yet. So there could be a change on this particular case as well. Two people were arrested and more arrests may be coming after authorities busted a large marijuana operation in Sheepshead Bay, Brooklyn. Suspected of making and distributing the products to thousands of illegal weed shops around New York. Behind the unmarked doors of small storefront was what New York Sheriff Anthony Miranda described as a million dollar illegal weed operation 
one that included the packaging of marijuana and edible candies and the use of chemical flavors among other potential toxins being mixed with concentrated THC. Everything that we say presents a certain danger to children and to the health of people who want to legally participate in the market is at this location, Miranda said. The sheriff-led task force, which is now has the power to padlock illegal weed shops after inspections, is collecting a mountain of evidence, including 50 pounds of raw cannabis. Again, this could be thrown out if the case that's right now pending goes the way it's going to go. Police arrested two people found packaging items like phony labels claiming the product was from California. The false labeling, the false packaging, those would be additional felony charges they will be facing. Now it moves from a civil enforcement to criminal investigation, Miranda said. This is the first illegal weed distribution center in the city that the task force has raided uh, that also has an elaborate printing press which cranks out of out all kinds of colorful labels for edibles. Yeah, you can see it. They, you know, they have fruity pebbles and all that stuff in there that kids enjoy. This violates every single rule that you could think of that has been constituted by the state office of cannabis management. Miranda said. In another article, we discussed we discussed the failure of the office of cannabis management. We know that the head has resigned including the one that says that the cannabis products cannot have labels that appeal to kids. All this was going right under the noses of neighbors on this residential block of Avenue T. Residents told Eyewitness News reporter Sonia Rincon that the storefront had an awning that said pushing P on T, but that disappeared a few months ago. It shut down. I don't know after that what they're doing, said neighbor Chris Wong. Another neighbor suspects the, this wholesale operation developed after the store closed. Sheriff Miranda said shutting this place down will probably impact other illegal weed stores in the region that have been buying the items packages here. Shops have been getting shut down one by one thanks to complaints. Community complaints are extremely important, Miranda said. They are the first ones who observe these locations opening and operating illegally. Now, you may ask yourself, why do you think that this might end up being thrown out of court? Well, see, the thing about it is, when you look at constitutional-wise, they just went in without any evidence to the situation. They just heard from complaints, wasn't investigated, they just went straight in and shut the place down. Whoever owns this, this particular place may not fight it, but if the other cases go the way they go, it may this may end up in the same direction. Remember, the, show, the, the smoke shops and the bodegas that are being shut down for carrying illegal cannabis, which is also being shut down for untaxed cigarettes and vape pens. Understand this. Under the untaxed cigarettes. Normally, if you get caught, if you're a bodega store owner, smoke shop, you get caught with untaxed cigarettes. It's a slap on the wrist. It's, it's just a fine. It's when you get caught multiple times, you can tend to lose your license. Okay? And the thing about it is, they do undercover work to see if this is happening. Especially it's being sold underage. If uh, basically, you know, they have to go through the courts to get this. They have to have a court judge sign off on this. No, what they're doing here is that the governor of New York and the mayor of New York have just given broad powers to the sheriff's department and NYPD to just go in and padlock these businesses. Now, understand, you know, we want to get rid of this and we know that uh, these guys are doing wrong. But remember, in this country, it's innocent until proven guilty to the situation. That's why we have the courts to handle this. But here's the other half of this, and this is the scary part. Yes, they shut this down. This is number two they've shut down. There's a lot more of them out there. Look at the size of the operation and how many thousands of shops that are out there. 
Do you think that those who are responsible for these operations, China, cartels, do you think that basically they put all their eggs in one basket? No, of course not. Of course not. There's still stuff coming in from outside the state outside New York as well, as far up as Maine, as far west to California. We know some of this cannabis is coming from other states, this illegal cannabis, because the, there are farms out there as far west as California and far north up to Maine. We've, we've talked about these stories. A lot of them are being run by Chinese operatives. That They're working for the CCP. This is this is this is this is not uncommon. You've seen what has been going on out there. This happens constantly and it will continue. This is what happens when you legalize cannabis. It was never going to work. You say people, well, they're making money. They're, they're. Mm -mm. Look at the over, look at, at the overall. People are not going to pay the taxes that it cost to buy you know legal cannabis only the only ones that are buying it there they're afraid that they're going to get bad stuff but remember there's a lot of people out there who have their own dealers who have been de they've been dealing with for many years and they continue to make business yeah that's right they're continuing to stay in business by th the customers they have this is no surprise a lot of though there have been a lot of the, those of us that have been warning on there the stupidest thing to do was to legitimize cannabis into the market you know they're always saying well it, it, it's you know it's natural from the ground so is tobacco you see where we at with tobacco these days so nobody's died of it that we know of. Remember, most people, now these days, we're hearing from the emergency rooms that people are going in, they're saying, yeah, I was smoking cannabis, you know, and I'm having this reaction. This, and we're hearing this now. because And those are in places where cannabis is legitimate. I myself grew up, you know, with people around me have smoked cannabis and have acted very weirdly, have gotten sick over to the nature, unknown illnesses that we don't know about because we don't know where they got it from. It's worse now. Today's is not the same cannabis as it was when I was growing up. It isn't. It was much weaker then. Now it's much stronger. And that's where the danger comes in. You know... All the drugs that we, we, we've put out that we said, oh, it's okay to use and this, this, and that, you know, we don't, have, we don't put restraint our, on ourselves. They think they're going to resolve the crime problem. See, this is what, in our politics, what messes to the situation. You know, they think, oh, we get rid of all the guns, that should solve all crime. No, it's never going to stop that. It is the human nature what they're going to do. Look, there's there's a congressman in New York that wants to legalize mushrooms. Come on, please. You know, you know, what are you going to do? Cocaine next? You know, we have a crack problem once again. Look at the streets. Look at what's going on here. 8th Avenue, how horrible it is. It's lined with drug addicts up and down and yes, they do use cannabis. Philadelphia, you got people up there injecting themselves, smoking cannabis, and all that. And look at look at what they're happening. Same thing over the West Coast in Seattle, San Francisco. You know, this should tell you it just shouldn't have happened. Hopefully, on this roundabout, if if there's a change in government in November, that they decide to put aside changing the labeling of cannabis uh, to legitimate and and keep it on illegal listings on there the states should move away if they want to do research and say they want to keep it medicinal yes but do it the right way hand it out 
like every other medication out there. People say, well, you know, big companies are going to make money off of it. But you're handing it out properly. Let's worry about the big company, the big pharma in another way. You know, there are many, many other things that there are many other drugs that people need for their health that they charge too much. My wife uses insulin. You know what the price of insulin these days are? It's very, very expensive. They want her to use a cheaper insulin, and that insulin makes her sick. Because the one that works properly costs about $400 a pack. Think about that for a minute. And that's versus, what is it, about $100 a pack for the, the ones that make her sick. So comment below. Let me know what your thoughts about this, about this this uh, raid. Do you think uh, this, this is put a damper on it or this is just another Band-Aid done by the Adams administration? So let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like share this video and hopefully today's the day i've earned your subscription thank you for the support we'll see you on the next video thank you for tuning in and bye bye now thanks for watching commenting and sharing this video and if you haven't yet please subscribe as this helps the reach of this channel finally as a content viewer you have the ability to help support this channel as new internet laws around the world will diminish our reach and affect our sponsors if you choose to help, there are two ways listed in the description below. The first link will lead you to a pay site where you can make a monetary donation. The second will lead you to our gear shop where you can buy shirts, mugs, and other gear. Discounts will be listed on the site. Once again, thank you for watching and your support.